Hello, Michael here. As you may know, we have a thriving community on Patreon, the crowdfunding site, and of course those folks get special shows and exclusives as a reward for their support that only they can see. Now, one of the regular things we do is produce a weekly podcast called The Monday Megalith, which is Rupert and I having an in informal chat about some of the megalithic sites that we've had the privilege of visiting down the years. Would you believe we've been doing them since March last year and that we've made 45 of them so far? Anyway, the point is, this video is an unashamedly cheap way of A, getting some content out to you folks on YouTube, and B, advertising the fact that we're on Patreon. It's a recording of Rupert and I recording our latest Monday Megalith podcast. It's usually published to Patreon in edited form, audio only. But here's the warts and all video of us talking about the latest subject, and it's the first time we've uh, done a French site, by the way. It's a huge dom sort of passage grave thing in the south of France called the Domaine des Fades, the Dolmen of the Fairies. I'll say no more. We hope you enjoy the conversation, and you'll consider helping us out by joining our Patreon community. Link in the description below and uh, up there and getting access to the other 45 podcasts and much more besides. See you around. Bye-bye. Hello, everyone. I hope you're very, very well indeed. Welcome to um, another Monday Megalith, but not just another Monday Megalith. Um, the first in a fresh series. What's going to be fresh about this, the next five uh, episodes of the Monday Megalith, Rupert? I tell you what's fresh fresh this time we're, we're in france we've never done this before we've, we're actually romping away from the british isles and we're uh, we're down in the south of france yeah yeah for the next five because five we do shows have some wonderful megaliths down here yeah um, well why well because we can um <laughs> well mm -hmm. because um those of you who've seen our movie from 2019 my word it seems like a long time ago now doesn't it it really does um yeah. uh, Dolmens of the longer dock uh, which we were able to make uh, because um uh, Rupert as you know lives down in the south of France so we had available to us these uh, wonderful monuments if we used um Rupert's house as, as a base to to work from and so we did mm. And so we've got very fresh memories, or relatively fresh memories, uh, of uh, these wonderful sites. And we thought, well, why not share these in the Monday Megalith? It's silly not to. Mm. Yeah. So that said, where are we going to first? Today, we're going <laughs> to the wonderful site of... <laughs> it's Morel das Fadas. It actually has lots of different names. Um but uh, Moral des Fadas, it translates as the Hill of the Fairies, yeah. um, which is, I suppose you shouldn't be surprised really that uh, they come up with these little uh, folk names. But Moral but des, it, des Fadas is more Spanish than French. Um, it is. It, well, it, over time, you see, the thing is that the, the Spanish border, the French-Spanish border, has moved a lot throughout history. And yeah. there was a point... I don't remember the dates, actually, but there was a point uh, some hundreds of years ago when this part of France was actually still Spain. Yeah. And uh, so there's a, a lot of Occitan... Uh, it, well, it, it's still Occitanie. This um, whole region of France is still Occitanie, but there's a lot of Catalan uh, history here as well. Mm. So mm. it's all a bit of a melting pot. And the French name, I think, is the main name we should call it, really. The Domaine des Fades or Coteau des Fées, it still all yeah. translates as the Hill of the Fairies, which or, is quite sweet. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, does Dolmen translate as hill? Or? No, but um, they're still calling it the Dolmen of the Fairies. Actually, I mean, I'll tell you what, be... there's an interesting digression there, but we'll save that for later, but around the world, word Dolmen and, uh, and, and oh, other stuff. Yeah. Wow. Well. Maybe so, but what, what, yes. Dolmen Lost in de translation. Fad. Dolmen de Fad. What have we got here? Mm. What are we looking at? It's spectacular, well, isn't it? Oh, it's it's stunning. It's uh, it, it's in a, a little village, or just outside a little village called uh, Siron. Uh, it's northeast of Carcassonne, 
Um, but it is the largest passage grave in southern France. Uh, it's absolutely huge. It's, uh, um, oh God, how long is it, the whole passageway? It's 24 metres. It's about uh, 100, 100 feet long. Um, um, yeah, the passage itself, not quite 100 foot long, but I think the, hmm. pre the when it was covered way back in, in a mound, yeah, it was about a, hmm. 100 uh, foot long. Yeah. So in yeah. our own terms, we're, probably, we're looking at a French long barrow, basically, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Essentially, mm -mm. essentially. Um, uh, but I mean, the height of it, though, in comparison with any, you know, if you're going to compare it with any British long barrows, yeah, it's uh, the height is well it's statuesque, shall we say? It's uh, well. The thing is, uh, the the monument uh, is on top of a hill, so I don't know how much that mm. is helping our perception of the elevation. Uh, of the thing. Um, well, no, how much I mean, of... if you're if you're standing inside the passage. Oh, sure, yeah. That even standing inside the passage, yes. Uh, you know, you you can't touch the capstone. Oh, yes, of course, that's right. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. Whereas if you go to any British uh, long barrow, then you you have to crouch mm, mm. to uh, uh, to walk the length of it. Mm. So it's quite uh, different from that point of view. Mm. Uh, but uh, yes, so you so you've got this enormously high uh, burial chamber uh, is the only way to describe that. It's uh, you know when you walk down the oh no let's, let's backpedal a little bit because the, the thing that I particularly love about it that really struck me the first time I visited was when you park your car at the bottom of the hill yeah and then start walking up that you see this. It's not really that impressive, but you just see this dolman sitting on the top of the hill, <laughs> um, and uh, and it's it's just you know you think okay yeah. all right oh, no this is good this is good, and it's only when you actually get up to it that you realise that you're on the top of the mound, yeah. and you're then looking down into this dolman, which is actually a a complete you know enormous passage to him. It's just Vast. Um, I've got a good photograph which I'll put in the. Um, well, oh, good. I think there are yes. quite a good, a lot of good photographs which I'll put in the uh, description below for for Patreon folk who are listening to this on audio it's, only. It's it's such an impressive place. Yeah. It it really is. Uh, and well, it it, 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 it it is officially the largest. Uh, uh, is it monument or or just a uh, dolmen in France? It's the it's the large, largest passage tomb in uh, in southern France, not yeah. in the whole of France. Okay, um, but uh, it's it's the largest capstone in the region. I mean, there's a lot of largest <laughs> about it. Yeah, and to give a sense um, of scale, because we're talking about it, uh, that we've got. Um, uh, a capstone which is what twenty tons or more. They estimate twenty-five to thirty tons yeah. for the capstone, and uh, and another impressive aspect of that is that the the site as a whole, so all the dry stone walling and all the other mm. uh, orthostats, they are all made of sandstone, which is local. Literally, it's there, you're standing on it. Mm. But the capstone comes from a limestone outcrop, which is uh, a couple of miles away, uh, three kilometres. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, there's a reason for that. Obviously, they... Uh, it's, it's one uh, of those places, uh, you know, when you're actually there, I don't think you appreciate, you know, quite what went in, into the place. But mm. it's only when you can I step away? This is my own experience. I'm talking for myself here. Only when you step away, you think, hang on, the amount of effort that went in, into that thing. We just take for granted, you know, stones mm. being in situ in, in places. And mm. we don't relate to the effort that it took to, to put them there. And that's, I yeah. think, when, you know, in retrospect, and, you, and I suppose also looking at the photographs, and you think, oh my lord, that is such a lot of work, and such a lot of skilled work as well. You can't just yeah. knock one of these uh, things up. You've got yeah. to know what yeah. you're doing seriously. 
um, uh, you know, and mm. as, as ever, have a, a serious sense of purpose behind it as well uh, mm. to, I presume, uh, honour your dead in such a way. It's just magnificent. You know, there, there's something really major for me about uh, not just this site, but a few of the sites of uh, you know, that are constructed in a similar way down in this part of France. And that's that how many times have we said, looking at all the places in Britain, about the missing horizontals? Yeah. We're always talking about the missing horizontals. But you look up the passage of uh, of this grave and you've got the standing stones at reasonable, uh, you know, sort of reasonably equidistant as you go up the passage, which are... Uh, filled in the gaps in between the standing stones are filled with dry stone walling, and uh, and so it makes you wonder if a lot of the places where whether it's stone circles or what have you in Britain, that well were they infilled with dry stone walls and all those smaller stones have just been taken away for you know reuse as building materials somewhere else? It's quite possible. Mm, mm. Uh, you know, it's. Uh, it's amazing how it's a, a common theme at a lot of the burial sites down here that you have these, not huge, you know, the, the, but the, the stones that are maybe three or four feet tall, metre to a metre and a half tall. And, uh, and they're all, you know, evenly spread by, say, you know, a couple of metres apart with dry stone walling filling in the gaps. Yeah. Um, don't see that in Britain, do you? Uh, not so much, no. Yeah. No, um, I gather that it w was uh, not in the best of states um, before the 1940s. It was a bit broken yes, down. Yes, it, 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 it has been heavily reconstructed, but, um, but it's thought to be as accurate as it can be because although it had all fallen down, it was very clear where everything had been. You know, nothing was profoundly displaced. It had just collapsed. Mm. Um, yeah, I, th I, th I think... Which makes it, sense when you look at it. There are photographs of the capstone almost at a 45-degree mm -hmm. angle. So <clears throat> yeah, somebody, yeah. Uh, had, they did actually put a, an upright in uh, to support. And I also gather a lot of yeah. that dry stone walling um, was from uh, a, re uh, um, a restoration that was done in the 1960s, not around about 1967 or something like that. Uh, and I so think you're right. I don't a lot of that dry stone yeah. walling actually replaces missing uprights mm. that may or may not have supported further um, uh, capstones that covered the entranceway. Interesting little sidebar well, here because it's not classed as um, an allée couverte b simply because it's only got the one <laughs> capstone. But I'm thinking, yeah. well, surely the other capstones were removed, which would make it an allée couverte. I, I agree with you. I, I think that um, it's one of those eternal problems with archaeology and it's just as bad in Britain. Yeah, where... categorising. Things, yeah, because we're obsessed with putting things in categories. Mm. The honestly, they're just uh, <laughs> they shouldn't <laughs> be categorised like this. I'm I, the thing that um, makes me question that rationale is that there are um, in the region, and when I say the region, it, it's it covers um, a few departments, but if you're going down close towards the Pyrenees, then there are a number of um, these <laughs> allée couverts. So they're circular structures with a dolmen in the middle. Yeah, They're not as grand as this site. Um, but uh, the common theme with all of them, even the ones that are in a pretty shoddy um, state of repair, is these reasonably equidistant uprights with dry stone walling in between. Um, and so looking at the others in comparison, this one does seem to be, it, it makes sense the way it is, mm. rather than this dry stone walling replacing other verticals. Yeah. I mean, it's obviously it's always possible, but it's certainly, you know, it's quite common. Uh, it fits with the other sites in the region. Is there anything similar um, in Britain? 
Can, something to compare it to. Well, in terms you know, of, you know, internal structure and uh, size. I don't know if this is just my head going off somewhere completely inappropriate. I don't know. But the only thing uh, in terms of uprights and then lower walls, the only thing that that really sings out... Well, number one is um, uh, Cairn Holy in oh, Scotland. okay. Uh, different, uh, uh, and the other one is is Tinkins wood, except that I don't really trust the dry stone walling at Tinkins wood either. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, yeah, but nothing really with that size of passage, unless we go to somewhere like Newgrange or Mays How or somewhere like that to to get an Im impression uh, of the size of uh, of the passage. Because the passage is not only wide; it's tall. I mean. That's the thing. There's, yeah. I, I can't think of anything in Britain where, uh, well, as you say, you know, if you go to somewhere like Mays Howe or Newgrange yeah. where you've got that height of chamber, but um, this to me, it reminds me more of... Um, um, <laughs> a senior moment. <laughs> I'm having a real senior moment now. Yeah. Um, what's come on? A uh, pentryphan in uh, in Wales. Oh goodness! Uh, you know where? Yes, where I can't reach the capstone. Now you can reach the capstone, can't you? Mm -hmm. I can't. I'm a short person. Um, but <laughs> yeah, but, but, but that's that's a. Uh, well, it's interesting that, yeah, I suppose if you just separate it out, if you went to uh, Domodedovo and you just separated out the burial chamber mm. if you put a fourth yeah standing stone in to support the uh the um the capstan you'd have something something like um yeah but uh yeah the great thing about this place is that it's complete with its um uh, approach yes. chamber it, it's pa it's passageway heading towards the other the thing that sets this um so apart from British sites is you look at the uh, the way the internal uh, stones, so where it, you're separating the passage from the burial chamber at the back, um, uh, the, the way that that entrance is cut into the stone. So you've got a, a circuit almost, you know, if it was complete, it would probably be a circular entrance. Well, the whole the... whole passage is divided into three by these two mm. um, large uh, slabs. They're quite thin yeah. slabs, aren't they? Mm. Um, are, are they singular slabs or are they made up of two joined together? I think they're two joined together. They're two joined together, yeah. aren't they? Uh, and and they sort of pretty much equally divide the passageway up in into yeah. three chambers. But the remarkable thing is that the the carved holes um, mm. um, in the middle of them. What are they for? I mean, I've heard them. I haven't heard them anyway. I'm looking at um, uh, the Wikipedia entry um, mm. for for the site. It calls them soul holes. I've never heard that said mentioned before. Like it's a thing, you know, uh, uh, like a passage tomb has a, has a soul, has slabs with a soul hole in. I have never heard that before, and I would really question who put that entry on Wikipedia. Uh, well, it may be the it may be the Wikipedia translation because I think this is translated from the uh, from from the French automatically, actually. But it's an interest, right. but but that hasn't sprung from nowhere from well, the nothing. French for the soul is um um. Lamb. Well, I, yeah, I don't want to go down uh, that. So, uh, that route. no, I was just wondering if it could be translated as anything else. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I, I, what I find intriguing because th there are and there are a lot of sites in southern France and going down into Spain where there is a circular hole. In fact, you see it in India as well, which is yeah. intriguing, uh, where you have this circular hole uh, cut that takes you into the burial chamber yeah. itself. Now, something I find slightly intriguing there is that if you go to, if you look at the sites on the Isle of Man, and we actually commented on this in Standing With Stones, or did we, or was it just something we were chatting to each other about, but uh, that you, you do see um, 
one of the stones to the side of uh, a portal is cut uh, in an arc and then you have a flat stone that's leaning oh, against it. So, yeah. so, so you get that sort of <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. shape yeah. Uh, for the entranceway. And, uh, and I always wondered if that, if there was any connection there, because it looks as if these sites down here are, uh, are a more developed version of that. They might not be at all but it's just well uh, it's a it's, every, a it's a it's a question of you know whether thinking in terms of significance of being able to get in and out and who's getting in and out you know just that interesting thing of calling them the soul holes because they're, they're quite ubiquitous across uh central uh, mm. y- europe you know when you've got uh, usually it's just the entrance to the soul to- hole uh, hmm? It's all right. I'm just being a grouch again. Soul hole. Who called them that? Um, well, I, d- I don't know. Without uh, look, I have to go back no. to retrans. <laughs> go back to the uh, the French on on the. Well, I don't care thing. what language it's in. But it's I mean- me- but it's mentioned as a. <laughs> but it doesn't surprise me um, at all that uh, that you know it's talked about the as a thing hole. because they're more common mm. on the continent. And uh, up through Germany and up into, yeah, much more common. You see loads of photographs of um, uh, stone, uh, of, of tombs with this uh, hole uh, Do you know, carved if in you, the entrance portal. If you go right the way across into Russia, some yeah. of the Russian dolmens have got very circular holes cut into uh, to take you into the burial chamber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's an interesting thought, actually. Is it just that everybody in Britain was getting lazy? They couldn't be bothered to cut the holes. You just put straight sides up much easier. You do that. Done that's in an right. afternoon. Yeah, we'll, we'll just make the whole passage narrow and make it hard anyway. I think that's what was going on, basically. Yeah. In fact, you know what? Maybe that's why the British ones are so low. Maybe that's why you have to crouch to go all the way through. It's, do you know what? That's tall enough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What, carve a hole in that? Oh, come on. <laughs> it could be. It could be. Uh, These people are all lying down or crouching down. They don't need a high ceiling. Oh, we've gone all facetious now. We have, but it's not stupid, though, is it? I mean, it's quite possible. You know, you don't... It's. Uh, you put people in a hole in the ground, they don't need a lot of altitude. Anyway. Um, anyway, Domen mm. des Fad. Domen des Fad has been excavated, yeah. 1940s and in the 1960s. Um, mm. Anything of significance found? I mean, one thing we haven't mentioned, and that is uh, the dating of the site. Well, it's Neolithic, isn't it? Yeah. Um, do you know what? I, um, I'm i ashamed to say that I don't remember that off the top well, of my head. Well, I, I don't think there's yeah. anything particular. I think that it's an, one of the, these places where it's an assumed date because I don't think there's any particular artefact. Absolutely. Has, I mean, there's no lab work uh, exactly. being done. Yeah, yeah. Um, hmm. So I, I shouldn't uh, worry about that. I don't think there's anything uh, really specific to, to go on except that uh, it is mm. Neolithic. I, 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 I'll be a bit of a troublemaker. Oh, go here. on then. Um, well, it's just when you approach the site, uh, so you come out of Siron and you're driving uh, towards it and the, the landscape is fairly flat. Uh, and then you come to the hill yeah. that, uh, that this site uh, sits within. And the thing is that when you're approaching it from the west... Damn, it looks to me like that hill is is man-made. You reckon? It's so tidy <laughs> as an overall shape. It does, it, it does um, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and when you've got such a flat landscape all around it, it does make me wonder if they deliberately, um, you know, put that up as a huge mound, a Silbury Hill-esque mound. Yes. Nevertheless, there are uh, such oddities that are not uh, man-made, and if there was one lurking about, I would mm. reserve it uh, especially for putting a dolmen on the top of. If that, I was that is that is quite so true. That I is think quite true. We'll, I'm only we'll, saying we'll, um, as the the impression that I get approaching it from the west, it does look like a 
Yeah, so it's not now. quite your Glastonbury tour, is it? Uh, sort of no. reaching out of the. Uh, no. <laughs> no. I mean, how how tall would you say it was? Really, it's. Oh, <laughs> 60, I'm, sixty feet. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. From, I would from say the so. Road level. But here's like the interesting that. thing, Rupert. It, we've got we, there was a riveted dagger found there. Mm. Now the. In, Interesting part of it is it seems that, you know, metal work was far earlier and so the the dagger seems to be associated with the dating of the of the tomb, which you'd never mm. get in in England. You'd never get in Britain. Because it would no, be the, Neolithic is far too early, you know, in pure dating terms, to find that's any true. kind of uh, metal work. And yet here there's no fear about um uh, matching a copper uh, riveted dagger into the Neolithic. Interesting yes. point. Well, it is an interesting point. I suppose we do have that crossover yeah. of, uh, you know, if you're going to pick Chalcolithic as the gap between, uh, yeah, yeah. or not gap, the crossover between Neolithic and Bronze Age. But the point is that the Bronze Age is going to be earlier on the continent Absolutely. anyway. Absolutely. Here's I'm your mission. And the- You've got to nip up the road to Carcassonne because it's the, the dagger is in the museum there. Is it? Yeah. That's interesting. I didn't know that. I thank you for edumacating me. I think, I think it is. Um, yes. Because what's the other riveted dagger that we know about? Are you testing me? <laughs> no, it's in the Wiltshire Museum, isn't it? I can't think of another one off the top of my head. Oh, from the um, um, uh, Bush Barrow collection. Yes. Yes, yeah. I don't think it's going to be quite so lavishly uh, riveted. Maybe not. Oh, but, I have to go and have a look yeah, at this. But we're pretty sure and, that's, uh, uh, that's considerably and, later. Anyway, is there anything it, yes. we, more we can say from an archaeological point of view about... Uh, about from an archaeological the, the point of view, no. I mean, there's, there's yeah. virtually nothing known about it. So we're it, left other with than... the, uh, one, the, the impression. It's one of those... It's a must-visit, really, if you're in that part of... If you're oh, down... it, it's a... St- Stunning, stunning sight. Mm, it, mm. There's no question. I think um, it's become one of my favourites, actually, you know, looking back. It doesn't surprise me. As you know, guys, you know, our purpose there was to film, make, uh, get some mm. great footage and point the camera at Rupert, make him look silly sitting on top of the capstone. <laughs> <laughs> no change there. Yeah, yeah. The complete success uh, <laughs> result there. Um yeah. But uh, no, in the sunshine and the heat. Oh gosh, we will mention how hot it was um, more than <laughs> a few times. Well, we? do you know what? It wasn't the hottest day, though, was it? Not entirely. No. Oh, but uh, dear, anybody dear. that's uh, watched uh, Domins of the Longer Dark may query <laughs> the the uh, amount of noise that the uh, cicadas were making. I yeah. it that was as that was. As, as suppressed as I could make it, they were deafening. Yeah. It, it really that is day amongst yeah, the people pines think you up make there. it up. Yeah, but, it's uh, just you know, it's, absolutely it's astonishing. So yeah. that and the thing lens... that makes me laugh about the cicadas is that the what the noisiest ones are pretty small. Yeah. They're, they're, they're not the big ones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that led yeah. to the atmosphere of the whole place as, as well. Mm. It's a very very different experience to. Um, uh, West mm. Kennet, for example, perhaps. Yeah. yeah. Or something something like that. Yeah. yeah. I think, uh, you know, one of the other aspects not to be ignored, though, uh, about not just um, this site, but the fact that there are others not far away uh, that are of similar... Uh, <sighs> I can't say similar size because some of them are different shapes and different construction, but uh, but of you can tell that they are of equal importance, and the uh, you don't build sites like this in small communities. Mm. So although there is nothing, uh, you know, there are no major settlements to be found, mm. for example very probably because, as, as is going to be the same anywhere, that if people haven't moved far, then the modern towns and cities are just have been built on, you know, the, the ancient sites have just been developed and have become the modern towns and villages. Mm. Um, 
So how many people were there living in the area 5,000, 6,000 years ago to have warranted building sites of this immensity, really? I mean, one that we're not going to talk about today. We'll talk about it in, uh, in a future episode. But there's one site that's only well, a couple of miles away from here where when they excavated it, there were the remains of 300 people <clears throat> in there. Yeah. Now, they didn't get that many people from this site, but the point is that the site as a whole is, if anything, it's bigger. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, uh, you know, and it's a grander affair than the, the one down the road with 300 people in it. Mm -hmm. So you, you, do, you do have to question that you know how big were the societies mm. they must have been pretty damn big I which is thought. the point you make very well in the film and with that thank you, <laughs> you would you believe mm -hmm. we've been talking now for nearly half an hour that's shocking that's absolutely shocking um, but I hope uh, we've conveyed enough about this site to inspire you to <laughs> fly now mm. to the south of France. <laughs> yes, to the ode, permitting. Uh, yeah. uh, to visit th this and other sites. Um, yeah, mm. it uh, holds a special place in our hearts. And, uh, mm. yeah, it was a, a good adventure going up there and, and filming. It certainly was. Uh, there'll be photographs galore below and... Um, well, I hope you've uh, enjoyed listening to this one. Um, uh, I don't know if the other ones will be as long uh, or or not. <laughs> well, one of them will be. We will await. No, in fact, they might be. We will <laughs> await. There's, yeah, quite a bit to say. Quite a bit to say. Um, oh, dear. Anyway, uh, mm. I hope... Um, Thanks for listening, folks. Yeah, yeah. I hope we've uh, satisfied your uh, need for uh, uh, Gallic dolmens for the moment. <laughs> Well, not yet. You've got another few weeks of it. That is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. That's it for the moment, guys. <laughs> Take care, folks. See you soon. Bye-bye.